Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a 1950s dress pattern. I have been watching a lot of Mad Men recently so I was very inspired to make a dress that looked like I would work in their toxic work environment. So I'm really excited to share this project with you guys. Um, if you haven't already go ahead and like and subscribe. I've been going live to discuss what I've seen on Mad Men and kind of like chat with you guys. So if you're interested in seeing more content like that, you can go ahead and check out the live section of my channel and I'll probably be doing another live soon. Thank you guys so much for supporting my very last video. If you haven't seen it already, I recreated a 1950s play suit using my Janome Skyline S9 for the very first time. And so for today's video, we're back using a vintage machine and I'm really excited to share with you guys. As I told a couple of people in the comment section over there, my content is not going to change. The Janome is just an addition to my fleet and will be used on and off as I rotate through my sewing machines like I already do. So not to fear, vintage sewing machines will be staying here. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Serena underscore if you'd like to see what I'm up to in real time. You can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi if you'd like to support this channel further. And you can become a bobbin over on Patreon if you are interested in more content and exclusive content from me. Before we get into the materials and the pattern, this video is kindly sponsored. So let's hear from our sponsor. Today's video is kindly sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a free mobile and PC hidden object game beautifully set in the 1920s. This story follows a murder mystery storyline where June, our main character, has to uncover who is responsible for the death of her sister and brother-in-law. As someone who loves vintage design and historical architecture, this game was food for my eyes and my imagination. The murder took place inside of a mansion, which the game allows you to decorate and remodel yourself. The first room we allowed into reminds me so much of my art deco bedroom, which kind of serves to be very relaxing as I rush through the game to find all the hidden objects and possible clues. I play on my phone, so it's the perfect relaxing activity for sitting out in my patio garden, which the game also allows you to decorate. So solve the mystery and decorate your mansion for free by downloading June's Journey in the description box below. June's Journey is available for Android and iOS devices as well as PC through Facebook games. Thank you June's Journey for sponsoring this video. For today's pattern, I'm going to be using Simplicity 1456 in a size 13 bust 31. This is a suit dress styled pattern and it comes in two views, which technically is just one with a jacket, but then you also have this detachable collar and bow piping which is not in view two and then you have the optional or detachable cuffs and things of that nature. I think the jacket is really unique because it uses the buttons of the dress as a closure and here is the back of the pattern that has the fabric requirements and then shows you all the pattern pieces so it looks pretty simple enough. For today's fabric I'm going to use this gray 100% linen for the main dress and for the contrasting details I'm going to use this scrap yellow poly cotton that is true vintage and then I also have some true vintage buttons that were on the original cards. The first step in this project besides cutting out the pattern pieces is to make your own bias tape if you don't already have some pre-made package tape. I want to use this specific vintage yellow scrap so I decided to make my own. I think I cut the strip about two inches wide on the bias and then I wrapped it around some cording and now I'm attaching it to the center front piece. I do not have a cording foot so I use my adjustable zipper foot as a multi-tool which is really good and when you turn the corners make sure that you trim or put a cut in it so that way it turns nicely and it doesn't buckle up and end up being very bulky on those corners. Also before I got started I marked all of the button placements on this piece of the fabric with Taylor's tack so I could go back and add the buttons later and now it's time to put the darts into the side front pieces and I'm using some Taylor's chalk for this. I did not pre-wash my fabric with this linen because when you wash linen it usually gets really soft and because I wanted this to stay structured um, a nice suit dress 
actually prepped my fabric by just ironing my fabric with spray start so I get a nice stiff and crisp base for this dress. And now it's time to add in all of the stay stitching on my curved seams so that way it doesn't stretch out. And now it's time to sew down the darts. And this dress was pretty straightforward. The directions were very clear and I find it to be a pretty simple design. And the only adjustments I made with my pattern pieces at the very start was to shorten the dress a little. It was quite long and um, it's still very long. I left it long, but I just wanted a little bit more of my calf showing for this since it was gonna be all one note in a solid gray color. This fabric was listed as sage, but it definitely looks more like a gray. So I had different plans for this fabric and I had to pivot. But since I was watching a lot of Mad Men, I was like, this is perfect for an office outfit. So that's what I went with. Before I can complete the front of the dress, I have to add buttons to the plastron. That is what they call the centerpiece in the pattern. I've never used that word before, so it was really cool to learn something new. And now I'm adding the final darts to the front pieces of the dress before I can put it all together. And then we move from using the uh, multi or zigzag foot back to the adjustable zipper foot so that way we can get a close top stitch to the piping. At this point, I'm very happy with the yellow detailing of this dress because I knew that I wouldn't just wear a solid gray garment and the yellow definitely helped put a little bit of me into the equation. This is the front of the dress pinned to the dress form and now I want to address my hip dips. This pattern is pretty hippy and I have none of that. I have hip dips and I have a very straight figure. So I want to address that without having to alter the ease out of the hips in the fabric because I didn't want the dress to end up being straight. I wanted to keep the curve in the dress because that is a part of what drew me to the pattern in the first place. So I am going to try and draft out some like hip padding not necessarily to add too much fullness to my hips but to give dimension because when you have hip dips that concaved curve allows for wrinkles at the hips and I don't want that so basically I'm going to use some scrap fabric to kind of trace out some sort of a pattern and then I'm going to use some craft foam and I'm zigzagging this little curve into the center of it and then I'm going to use some loose whip stitches to attach it to the side front and side back seams of the dress so they're easily removed for dry cleaning, laundering, whatever I wanted to do. They're not a permanent structure to the dress so they're tacked in like you would loosely tack in some shoulder pads. And so now it's time to assemble the back of the dress. The back of the dress sews together very similarly to the front so it's very straightforward until you get to the double vents at the back of the bottom back of the dress to help you walk. I feel like there's more than enough space for walking in this dress, but for whatever reason, there's a double vent in the back and I guess I could have reduced the skirt down so it's a little bit more slim. But again, I was trying to avoid that very straight um, silhouette and go for the more bell and hippie style that was portrayed in the picture, which of course is exaggerated. Um, vintage pattern art is slightly exaggerated but there are people who naturally have that body so it's more than possible and if you don't have it you can make it like me one of my main goals was to play around with padding and structure and things like that so i am not a professional i don't know exactly if this is going to work or at least at this point i didn't know exactly if the padding was going to work which is another reason why i made it so easily detachable just in case it did not i think it's important to be able to create structure and shape using everyday materials that are easy to find um, that don't require any kind of specialty shopping so um this foam is pretty accessible to me. I was able to find it at local craft stores, including my local Walmart in the past. And I think it's a really easy way to create dimension and add an extra element to your sewn work. I used it before in December as a test trial for a West Kit suit and it came out pretty nicely. So I was hoping to achieve similar success with this dress. Once the back pieces are complete, it's time to attach and assemble the dress at the shoulder seams. So that is what I'm doing now. 
I decided to go with pinking shears as my seam finishing option this go around. And it actually turned out to be a really good idea because I did do some alterations later on and I left the extra seam allowance so that if I need to let it out in the future, I can. At this point, all the main pieces of the dress are put together and I leave it open on the side seam so that way I can easily attach the sleeves in. I like to ease my sleeves in when the side seams are open. I find it to be the easiest way to do this instead of um, doing it closed. It just gives you more room to work and easily adjust your, um, your easing, your gathering. This dress is really simple and I definitely think that if you're going to be going with a more muted chill color like gray that it needs that pop of contrasting color and you definitely want to have that curve in there because otherwise a straight flat gray black solid dress I don't think would be as pretty without like the extra that makes this dress what it is in my opinion. Once the sleeves are on it's time to add on the neck facing you're going to sew that across and then you're going to understitch. This understitching is really important because you're going to add trim to or I'm adding trim to the neckline and you don't want the facing to roll forward at any point but especially when you have a contrasting trim. This dress has a center back zip so since it's not located under the arm and I don't have to pull it over my head I'm able to get a closer fit and reduce some of the ease. So in order to do that I flip the dress inside out onto my dress form and then I pinch out all of the extra ease with some pins and then I draw in the new stitching line with some tailor chalk and I sew it on my machine. I'm gonna link a video where I show myself doing that um, in the cards above. I took most of my ease out of the waist and under bust. I left the bust a little loose because I plan on wearing a padded bullet bra and I knew I would need the extra space. Now it's time to work on all of the yellow trim details and I'm using the scrap fabric for this. This is going to be the detachable neck trim and then I'm going to sew together the bow later. This is a very simple yet very important detail to this dress, I think. The yellow highlights really make it. Just like my makeshift hip pads, these are just loosely basted in so that they're easily put in and easily removed. I want to thank you all for clicking on this video and supporting my work. This was really fun to make and I'm really glad that I was able to pivot with this fabric because I think it turned out really nice in the end. Special thanks to all my Kofi donors and Patreon bobbins. Thank you so much for helping support this channel and going the extra mile. Don't forget to like and comment. Those ways of supporting this channel are equally important. It pushes my videos through the algorithm and gets more eyes on my work and I truly appreciate you. The bow is the final step and it's really easy to make. All you have to do is make that straight stitch and then you flip it so that way the centers meet and then add the knot to it and you're going to stitch it onto the neck trim and then your piece will be complete and then I'm going to show you a little of the details. So here you have the platron, I think it's pronounced the yellow buttons, the bow, and all of that cute piping. And I added some piping to the sleeves as well as instructed by the pattern. And I thought that was a beautiful pop of yellow and it really brings this piece to life. So all in all, I'm very happy with this. I think it would be fit for the office in Mad Men. And here is the final result. I don't exactly have shoes to match this color since I don't usually wear it often. So I'm wearing some nude toned shoes with it. And here you can see the double vents in the back. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate all of the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as downloading June's Journey in the description box below. Thank you again June's Journey for sponsoring this video. I hope you all have a beautiful, wonderful, and safe weekend. Bye.